So we talked about how these guys didn't need to do this, but being innovative, constantly working on their game. Um, one of the things that Giannis has done a better job of this year is his outside game. He's by no means one of the best. You know, he's not Durant by any stretch, but he's decent enough to where he can hit a shot. And he's a threat in that regard where he can stay in the game all of the time, you know, to his credit. And, you know, you've got a very similar player in a guy like Ben Simmons who nobody respects his ability to hit an outside shot. And that's really limiting his upside. John has kept working. He kept grinding. And that's exactly what Cruncher did with with these pro um, tools. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into the big three. The big three additions, and these are no secret. Manny talked about these in, in his video, but if this is new to you, um, the big thing that they did is they added the ownership projections from Osimo, who had, um, as far as I know from what I've seen, the most accurate ownership projections. I talked about how that isn't something that matters a ton to me, um, but it is something, if it matters a ton to you, of, hey, dude, I don't have time uh, to do much research. I just want to look at some stacks, some guys that are low-owned, and I'm going to go in on them. Perfect. Now you can do that. If that's what you really want to do, you can do that. Um, improved randomness. I went on my soapbox and really attacked randomness because it was insane how bad it was. Not on Cruncher, just the industry as a whole, the way that the computer built was not being communicated properly for what we needed to do. They fixed that. They've reached out to some really smart uh, math folks got it corrected, and I'm going to show you um, what that means and, and, and how that can help you. Especially, again, we want to talk about saving time. I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind um, that we're – lineups that we're going to create in a mind-blowing amount of time when we get to that piece. And then lineup study. I've done, I've done a video on lineup study, and um, – it wasn't, it was one of my first videos, so it wasn't that great. So we'll do a, an exact walkthrough of what I do when I look at lineup study and how the lineup study product on the website, um, lineupstudy.com, um, how it's um, been moved over to Fantasy Cruncher and how to go about using it. So this will be, this will be our, our deep dive um, part of the video series. So the first thing we're going to look at is, is the ownership. And we now have an ownership column where you can sort by the actual ownership. And this is going to help you. So the, the big thing that you can use is pitchers. This is going to be a big piece. And again, I talked about how I like to be about even with the field on the chalk. So we had Paddock coming in at 35%. I was obviously at 25% because I cap everybody at that. And I think that's where he ended up coming in at because at the end, and Paddock was worth being owned that high. He had an awesome game yesterday, uh, 26, in the actual score column, he had 26 points. So he, you know, chalks chalk for a reason. And, you know, when he got the win bonus, um, that hurt me a little bit yesterday. But it's one of those things where it's like, dude, I still had a good chunk of him. So it hurt me a little bit, but it didn't kill me. But this is where you could see some of these guys. You know, you take a guy like Luke Weaver, who is very erratic. So at 28%, I would want to be underweight on him. If you're playing the ownership game, you know, I try to keep things very simple. So let's not think about what I do, but this is how I would leverage something like this. You know, he ended up having an okay game, but it's not uncommon for Weaver to get rocked and, and ruin your whole night. So if you went in on Weaver at half of that ownership, you would be fine. Um, same thing with a guy like Corbin. Corbin on the road, he's been shaking on a new team. He got rocked. So there's another opportunity for you to leverage. Um, you know, if you see somebody that, um, you know, you Darvish at home, it pitches a lot better. And he was 20% ownership, decent game. Um, here's another real nice opportunity to leverage. You're always going to get a pretty good opportunity to get some innings with some of these Astros pitchers. He was at 20% owned, 31 points. Hop on the road, got rocked. So this is where you can start to take a look at, all right, well, is this pitcher a stud? Is this Verlander? Is this Scherzer? Um, I know they're going to be highly owned, and they deserve it. Some of these guys, Weaver, 
Corbin, if Darvish was on the road, um, Hop, these are some of the guys that I'd be like, nah, let's go a little lightweight. Let's go underweight on some of these guys. Let's be half ownership. Uh, let's be a third ownership. That way we can get into some of these guys um, like Soroka, 33 points. Get into Mike Miner, who was not a very good pitcher, or at least he, he didn't do that well in the past. I mean, he's just been nails this year, you know? So, you know, by capping some of these chalkier guys at the top that are shaky and they have a wide range of outcomes, it's okay to go underweight on them. So you spend less of your ownership on them, giving you an opportunity to be in this section um, with your Mike Miners, your Sorokas, your Peacocks, your Odorizzi's. That's how you can leverage it with pitchers. Um, going over to the hitter side, we'll sort it again by the top, and we'll just start looking for correlations. So we have a Yankee, a Yankee. It's only two Yankees. Don't really see any other Nationals. So there's nothing really that stands out from a chalk perspective other than what you already know is going to be chalk. So the Rangers at home, the Rockies at home, people are going to be stacking up those games. So if you're like, hey, you know what? Um, if I already know the Rangers are going to be chalk, you know, what's a good hitting team that's going to be less owned? And that's where you can come to this and you can sort by team as well. And you can start to look and see, you know, obviously you wouldn't want to be on the Diamondbacks because they're on the road in a hitter's park against a great pitcher. But if you're looking for a leverage opportunity, there's one. No one's going to be on those dudes. Same thing with the Braves. You can just scroll down and go team by team. Um, you know, let's look at a team like the Yankees. Because if you weren't playing the Rangers yesterday, the Yankees were the pivot. And pretty... Mm, this is somewhat chalky, but maybe you want to mix in some of the lower owned guys for the Yankee, you know, Torres had two home runs yesterday. So that's how you can go about leveraging the ownership piece here and looking at, Hey, I don't have a ton of time. I don't really know a lot about leverage. This is how you can start to learn it by looking at the ownership of these guys um, on an individual team basis, pitching basis. And this is where you can start mixing in your intuition with the tool um, Ownership is definitely an art and science thing. And that's why I talk about the number one thing holding people back is bankroll management. The number two thing holding people back is a overconfidence in how to do this correctly. There's very few people that can do it correctly. Um, I'm very average at it. So that's why it's not a big piece of my process as much. And there's guys who will spend so much time only looking at ownership and then their team flops and it's like, oh, but dude, man, like this team was super contrarian. If, 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 and it's like, no, man, like you're, you're making this way too complicated. So my best advice for ownership is understand what it does, understand how leverage works and use it to your advantage. Don't overcomplicate it. If it's not something that you care that much about, hey, I just know that I wanted to pay, play the Rangers and be all in on the Rangers yesterday. Okay, that's fine. They scored 10 runs. You don't need to look at ownership for that. But maybe it's looking at the pitchers of, hey, you know what? I didn't really feel that comfortable with a guy like Corbin or um, Hop, some of the other guys that got rocked yesterday. So that is kind of your crash course on, on ownership. It's now here. You don't have to upload it. It's included with FC Pro. They're accurate. It's phenomenal. It's worth, um, it's not even, and that's the thing is David added all this stuff and the price increase is minimal compared to everything that you guys have. Um, I wanted to cover all three in this segment, but I went a little deep on ownership. So we'll just um, stop right here and we'll get into the other two um, new additions with FC Pro.